Friedman Hardwood Floor Finishing 101. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of how I stain an oak floor. In this particular job, we're using Verithane Special Walnut Stain. So we'll talk about the preparation involved and the process itself. And we'll walk you through how I did it. So as with all oil-based stains, this is a penetrating wood stain, which is ideal for floors as it's very fluidy. What you have to remember when you're using this stain is that you thoroughly stir it. We don't want to shake these cans like you would a paint because with this stain, it's really, uh, it's, it's, it's not like paint. Um, it's, it's basically two components. You have the stain that's suspended in the fluid, which is the, uh, like the liquid component. So if you let this sit long enough on the shelf, what happens is that stain component settles to the bottom and it settles like mud. So that's why we want to thoroughly stir it and get the, get the corners, bottom corner of the can and make sure you feel all around there and bring it into the fluid. And um, it's very important that you're consistent with how you work with the stain and even when it's in the pan that you stir it regularly, especially if you leave it sit for a period of time, if you have to go out for some reason, um, you have to make sure, even if it's sitting in the pan, that you're stirring it. You know, I, I stir it every five minutes at my maximum um, just to keep, keep it liquidy and fluid. Otherwise, it'll settle in the pan as well. Another thing, too, I do is I prepare a few cans. Like, I get all the stain ready as far as this this step goes prior to starting the staining just to um, so I'm not delayed you know when I'm working and once you're thoroughly stirred then you're ready to use it take you through the process of how I stain and I find this works really well for me and it might work well for you so this is a special walnut stain we're applying to this floor it's red oak we've sanded everything should give you some background info we drum sanded this floor to a 60 grit then we kind of do this with one hand. Then we um, scrape the edgered to 100 grit on the ends and the perimeter. We then hand scraped the ends of the planks and used a palm sander to remove any visible edger lines, which usually which usually would always occur around here. Your edger lines are usually on the ends of your planks and you know along that wall along the edge. And then we use the OBS 18 Clark American Sanders square buff to do the entire floor. And we, we take it up to an 80 grit. So I start with a 60 then I go up to an 80. So I've applied the stain here. You know, I load it up onto the applicator. This is just a standard synthetic uh, Verithane applicator, and that is my preferred method of, of applying. So even if you, you know, you, you put it on and, you know, you can just, just saturate the floor with it, right? Put a lot on there. So on the first pass, generally what I do is I, I only do one, you know, a little bit more than one width of the applicator. And then after that, I use this, I use a sponge mop to remove it. Now, this, this looks dark because it's, I used this for a previous job, so it's already been used, but it's, it's been rinsed out. It just, you know, it's dark now, but. Um, so what I do before I actually begin to use the sponge mop, I'll actually put it into the stain and I will wring it out and then I can use it to remove the 
stain that's on the floor because I don't want to use a I, I know it doesn't look clean but it is actually totally clean it's been rinsed out so I wouldn't want to <coughs> use it right now as is because it would actually remove too much of that stain and um, you know it would make it too clean so if I used it you know without putting it into the stain first it would actually wipe off too much of the stain that's on the floor then later into the job as the, as the applicator and the sponge mop begin to get saturated with the stain it tends to start to look darker so that's why I want a consistency throughout the entire stain job so I will actually you know I'll submerge that into the stain wring it out and then use it to wipe off the stain on the floor I keep a, I keep a piece of plastic on the floor there So now I'm submerging it into this into the stain. I'm just going to wring it out. So now it has stain on it and it's not completely, you know, clean, stain free. So when I wipe it off, it's going to be, it's going to look more consistent. Now when it comes to the ends of the planks and the edges, I'll just take a rag and I'll wipe the, the excess stain off just to blend it in and make it look proper. And any areas you can't get, like around, you go around the, the, the trim, it's, it's harder to get in there with, with the uh, sponge mop. Well, you can't get in there, so you just take a rag. And once you start applying it, it blends in and gets some of this pigment on there. And then it looks good. So I've applied the stain and removed it. I applied it with the applicator, removed it with the sponge mop and the excess in the rags. And we'll just take a look at that now. So you can see it's very even. It brings out the beauty of that red oak. I can't stress the importance of really detailed and good sanding. So you really have to take your time in the sanding. And the sanding is the single most important aspect of your refinishing job. It determines what your floor will look like when you apply a stain. Especially when you apply a stain. If you don't apply a stain and you're just going to put urethane on then it's not as critical to do uh, you know, an outstanding sanding job. But when you're going to apply a stain on the floor, then it's very necessary to thoroughly sand the floor correctly. And I'll show you the most important points of a good sanding job and where you can notice when it's been done and hasn't been done thoroughly. Anyone can do it, you just have to be patient and you have to go through the st necessary steps to make the floor look right. So as I said before, at the ends of the planks here, if you don't edger correctly, if you don't remove the edger lines, you're going to see big circles here from the edger. And you can see I've taken them all out. There are no edger lines there at all. Right? That's your critical area. All the perimeter. There are no edger lines because we take the time to remove them. Then after that, we use the, or the OBS 18 to do the entire floor. And what that does by using that machine is it's preparing the grain, all of the grain to the same consistency. It's, a, it's a, just a giant, it's like a giant palm sander. So when you apply the stain, the absorption will be even because your board will sand it everything to the same grit. And I take it up to an 80 grit on the OBS 18. And, uh, you know, I just make sure that we cover the entire floor. And we do, like, with, with, in this particular job, I did five passes with the 60 grit. So five passes over everywhere. Back and forth. We start here. Start on the end. And we go all the way across the OBS 18. We go back and forth five times. You go back and forth five times, right? Then vacuum the entire floor.
vacuum everything off. Then put the 80 grit on. And you go back and forth at least, at least three times or four times. But really, the, the work has been done with the 60 that you've, you know, you've orbital sanded it. So with the 80, go at least three passes with the 80, and then you're ready for stain. Anyone can do this. You just have to go through the steps, take your time, and make sure. Another thing you do is check it with the light. Check everything to do before you apply the stain. Go through the entire job. Make sure you've got all your drum stop marks from your drum sander removed, right? You want the drum sander marks off, and you especially want the ends of the planks and the edges. The perimeters have got to be checked for edger lines, right? You got to remove them before you stain. stain and removing the stain as I am showing you with the sponge mop what I like to do to be consistent is well first of all these planks are three and a quarter wide the applicator is 10 inches so if you notice after I've done the first pass I just did basically the width a little bit more than the width of the applicator because it's too far to reach over to try to remove the the edge along the baseboard. When, if I'm too far out, I, it's hard to reach there. So I just do the first pass, I'll, I'll do basically one width. And then I can still reach the edges to remove the stain, the excess stain around the perimeter, right? So at that point, I'll, I'll just do the one pass. But then as I get into the floor, I can now do two passes. I can then do two passes with this, right? I'll do two passes with the applicator. That's going to cover three planks. And, you know, just you're saturating the floor. It doesn't matter what it looks like at that point because all you're doing is putting the stain down. It's when you come back with the sponge mop and we want to be a little bit more careful. So what I'll do at that point, I know I've applied the stain to these three planks and also these three planks. So I basically covered six planks. And when I come back with the sponge mop to remove it, I'll try to stay as close as on the seam as I can. And you don't want to put the sponge mop down halfway down the plank because sometimes you get, you know, an inconsistent line there. So you try to eyeball it to the edge of the plank. And what I'll actually do is I'll go back seven. So I'll do the three, which have been applied, the other three, and then I'll actually go back to the seventh. As you progress into the floor, you're going to have overlap going back as well. So obviously when, you, when you're coming into the floor, um, from where you applied the two, the two widths of the applicator of the stain, you're going to, you're going to have overlap dripping back onto your previous, your previous stain, right? So you have to go through it with that sponge mop, and that's why I go back that additional plank. Okay, if you know, if, if you don't have to do two passes, if you if you can't, you, you know, if you don't feel you can reach, one pass is fine. Then you would just go back to the fourth plank. Either way, you have to go back one plank, right? You have to go back that one extra plank just to get whatever um, drip, like whatever drip line could, you know, happen. 
right? So as long as you do that, then it's going to look really outstanding. So all right, here's where we are so far. It's starting to look really good.
stain has been applied and it's nice and dry now. This is the Verithane Special Walnut. It's looking quite good. Very even everywhere. No edger lines on the ends of the planks. They've all been removed by scraper and palm sander. Three coats of Fabulon satin urethane. 